Hello and welcome to The Postcard Professor, where we take complex ideas and explain them in the space of a postcard. In this lesson, we're going to be moving from point masses to rigid body kinematics. So kinematics is the first step in trying to analyze our new systems. And uh, for rigid bodies, we need to not only think about the movement, but also how things rotate. One of the canonical problems here, one of the ones that everyone likes to think about, is a ball or a sphere or a cylinder rolling down a hill. So typically, we think about two separate points on the cylinder. We think about uh, the point in the very middle, which I'm just going to call point A, and we think about a point that is touching the surface. It's a single point that's touching down there and I'm going to call this point B. So if this point A is rolling downhill, that means that we have some rotation, right? Uh, we typically think of rolling without slipping, which means that we need both motion and rotation. Uh, so I'm going to have some velocity of A, and then I'm also going to have uh, an omega and an alpha. But this point A isn't the only point that can have some velocity acceleration. So we can also think about uh, the velocity of B and the acceleration of B. Now, if we're talking about point B being the point on the ball or cylinder, then both of these share omega. So occasionally, especially if we're thinking about something with multiple links or multiple bodies, uh, we would call this omega of the body AB, the, the rotation rate of the body that contains both A and B. And we could do the exact same thing for alpha. Now, there's no difference between these. It's just naming things so that we're as clear as possible. So this name convention is great. Uh, it's what we've been using. Uh, I'm going to introduce a slightly different naming convention that will help out a little bit. We want to have these accelerations, these velocities, in terms of some reference point. So I'm going to define a point out in the middle of nowhere, call that point O. That can be our origin in this case. Now what we're interested in here is a vector that points from O to A. Now we can write this as the position of A with respect to O. Our velocity over here is the velocity of A with respect to O, and acceleration is also the acceleration of A with respect to O. And we can do the exact same thing from O to B. We would call this R of B with respect to O, and we would change the velocity and acceleration likewise. Now, the last step of this is to create a vector from A to B, and this would be the position of B with respect to A. So just using a little bit of vector mathematics, we can get this vector, uh, the position of B with respect to O, by adding these other two vectors. So R of B with respect to O is equal to R of A with respect to O plus R of B with respect to A. Now, a lot of times, uh, we don't really care about O. Uh, we just kind of write this so that our notation is the same for all three of these vectors. But if we don't care about O, we can write this as the position of B is equal to the position of A plus the position of B with respect to A. Now, we can differentiate these statements a couple times and arrive at similar expressions for both velocity and acceleration. So these expressions are great, but they're kind of obvious as they stand right now. So what we'd like to do is spend some time and think about how we can write the velocity and acceleration of B with respect to A based on some of the math that we've already done in the past. So let's think of this problem in terms of the cylindrical coordinate system. We have this point A and this point B, and we can write our position vector from A to B as R in the UR direction. So what this means is that we have a UR 
and u theta direction. Now, if we have u r and u theta, we can have a third direction u z, which is coming out of the paper based on the right-hand rule. And the reason that I want this u z is I want to represent omega and alpha as vector values. So omega is going to be equal to omega in the u z direction, and alpha as a vector is going to be equal to alpha in the u z direction. And to finish this up, we can say that the position, this r u r, is equal to the position of b with respect to a. Okay, so now let's think about the velocity of b with respect to a in cylindrical coordinates. So using the kinematics from particle dynamics, we could write this as r dot u r plus r theta dot u theta. Now, one of the keys of our problem here is that we're talking about rigid body dynamics. So we don't care about any deformation of the body, which means that this point, which we've defined to be on the edge, isn't going to be moving in or out. We're not allowing this ball to be squished at all. It's completely rigid. So this first term is equal to zero. Now we have a theta dot here, which we haven't talked about, but that's just equal to omega. So I can also say that omega as a vector is equal to theta dot in the uz direction. And this would be equal to theta double dot in the uz direction. Now we can kind of see how we might get to this term right here. We have an r, which we would have from this r vector, and we have a theta dot, which we have from this omega vector. Now, this term is in the u theta direction. Uh, we can get that from these other directions using the cross product. So the key, what we're looking for here, is that u theta is going to be equal to uz crossed with ur. So just to double check that, if uz is pointing up out of the paper, ur is pointing down to the left, then the right hand rule gives us our third direction as u theta. So how does this help? Well, r theta dot u theta is equal to theta dot uz crossed with r ur. So we can split up these two pieces and arrive at the two vectors that we've already named. So the first vector is this omega, and the second vector is the uh, position of b with respect to a. So the velocity here, v of b with respect to a, is equal to omega crossed with r of b with respect to a. So now let's look at acceleration. So the acceleration of b with respect to a, again just using cylindrical coordinates, is equal to r double dot minus r theta dot squared, all in the u r direction, plus r theta double dot plus 2 r dot theta dot in the u theta direction. Now, once again, we can cross out any r dots or r double dots because we are a rigid body. So then our acceleration is equal to a negative r theta dot squared u r plus r theta double dot u theta. For this term, we can do exactly what we did before. We can split this into a u z and u r and then go grab the theta double dot term to get the alpha vector. So this second term becomes alpha crossed with the position of b with respect to a. Now this first term already has a r u r in it, so we can just go use our definition directly, but we still need to deal with this theta dot squared term. So theta dot squared, we're just gonna call that omega, squared. And what we mean by this is just using the magnitude of rotation, not worrying about direction. And this is going to be multiplied by the radius, the position of b with respect to a. So for both of these, our goal was to get the velocity and acceleration in terms of vectors that we already knew. So we already knew alpha and omega which are in the uz direction. And then we have to know what the position is, the position between b and a. So using these two relationships, 
we can plug that into the velocity and acceleration over here, and we end up with uh, two equations. The first of which is the velocity of b with respect to our unmoving point. And that's gonna be equal to the velocity of a plus the rotation of this ab body crossed with the position of b with respect to a. And then our second is the acceleration of b with respect to this unmoving point is going to be equal to the acceleration of a plus the similar term right here, this alpha, crossed with the position of b with respect to a. But then we have an additional term on top of that. It's not enough just to switch from angular velocity to acceleration. We also need to account for the uh, centripetal acceleration. So we also have some omega squared multiplied by this radius. So when it comes to rigid body kinematics, there are two equations that you need to know. And what these do is they allow you to uh, connect multiple points in a complex uh, dynamics system. So this is about as simple as they come. If we know the positional relationships between various points, then we can manufacture relationships of the velocities and accelerations based on the angular velocity and acceleration of the bodies in the system.